in sociology, an influential theory that explains the dynamics between people and between groups of people is field theory. Its most important advocate is French sociologist Pierre Bourdieu. Bourdieu argues that reality is a social concept. To exist is to exist socially, in relation to others. What is real is relational, and everyone defines himself and the world around him by marking the differences between observed phenomena. The modern Western reality, according to Bourdieu, has come into being through a process of differentiation into semi-autonomous and increasingly specialized spheres of action. He calls these spheres fields and says that power relations between and within these fields structure human behavior. So, in order to understand how humans behave, it is important to understand in what kind of power relations they take part. In one of his articles, Bourdieu provides a working definition of this notion of the field. He says, A field is a field of forces within which the agents occupy positions that statistically determine the positions they will take with respect to the field. These positions takings being aimed either at conserving or transforming the structure of relations of forces that is constitutive of the field. This somewhat long definition may be illustrated by introducing the metaphor of a field that is used in athletic games. Let's say that an individual field, as defined by Bourdieu, is represented by a single football pitch. On this pitch, players, who Bourdieu calls agents, all occupy a position. Each position carries with it different dispositions and likely or potential courses of action for the player. For example, a striker will attempt to score a goal and a defender will try to keep the opposition from scoring. Now, these positions that the agents occupy in the field are determined by a number of things. Firstly, there is what Bourdieu calls habitus, or a structuring structure which organizes practices and the perception of practices for all agents. Bourdieu says that every individual's personal history, preferences and dispositions, placed in the context of the surrounding social reality, form a structure that to a certain extent predetermine that individual's potential courses of action. Social class, education, upbringing, as well as an individual's past choices, all form part of this structure and determine in part the behavior of an agent in the field. In the football metaphor, a player's behavior is analogously structured by, for example, his previous training and his physical condition, as well as by the quality of his football kit and his tactical prowess at playing the game. A second structuring principle in the theory of fields is DOXA, which Bourdieu defines as the universe of tacit presuppositions that organize action within the field the rules of the game, so to speak. Like habitus, these rules exercise a limiting influence on the potential courses of actions for the agents in that field. Agents in the same field will tend to share a set of rules, a common doxa, insofar as they agree that the game is worth playing. For example, football players will all agree on the rule that only goalkeepers are allowed to touch the ball with their hands. However, in Bourdieu's version of the field, agents do not always agree on the doxa, or rules of the game. In his definition, Bourdieu also says that agents occupy positions aimed at either conserving or transforming the structure of relations of forces in a field. Agents who take positions aimed at transforming the power relations will try to change the rules of the game to their own benefit. In our football metaphor, this would mean that one player would suddenly want to use his hands as well. The players who are attempting to conserve the status quo of the doxa will not agree with this and a struggle will ensue. Bourdieu says that in this struggle, players make use of their power, or capital as he often calls it, 
to impose the rules that favor them the most.